So at a very high level, uh, what we want to overview is the impact of ProtoScore. We're going to talk about some insights that we found around the actual structure of the organization, specifically how does the amount of management or hierarchy in an organization impact the outcomes that we see. We're also going to go a bit into how productivity changed throughout the year within the staffing industry and then go into a bit of work habits and how we see AI potentially being leveraged by those in the staffing industry. So to set the stage, um, I want to just talk about the population that we're looking at. So we're looking across 22, we have a sample of 22 different organizations with over 700 individuals and the size of the organizations varied quite a bit, but keep in mind that there were only certain roles that we decided to really hone in on. Um, and of those roles, those were the ones that we found that were most impactful to staffing orgs from the date of January 1st all the way to August 30th. What we show here at the very bottom are we tend to break our employees into different categories. Specifically, do we see that their scores are around average, above or below average? And just for context, these are the percentages that we saw within the staffing industry. Specifically, we saw that above average employees represented around 40%, average were around 45%, with around 15% of the remainder representing those that are below average. Cool. So one of the first insights I want to share with you all is the impact that we've seen specifically to employee retention based on the hierarchy, the amount of hierarchy that exists within the organization. So one thing that we notice in particular is organizations where there's a higher amount of management, meaning that there's a manager who has a manager who also has a manager, there tends to be a higher rate of attrition that occurs within those organizations. In addition, we've also noticed that for those organizations that their managers had even more direct reports, meaning imagine a manager of 12 compared to a manager of five. When you have groups where the managers are anywhere from five to six and above, what we've seen in the data is that at least one of those employees aren't going to be contacted for at least a week. And what we think might be going on here with the data is those employees in organizations that have less hierarchy are able to essentially embed themselves more within the everyday task. They're able to understand the vision of the organization and understand more of what they do and how that attributes to the overall goal of the organization. So that was one very interesting insight that we first pulled out uh, because we were not expecting that hierarchy had any relationship at all with attrition. Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, where I can add context is, you know, Adrian looks at all the data. What I do is I meet with a lot of our, our different firms um, and, and kind of get the the day-to-day -day stuff along with his data. And we just did um, we just did a study recently with a firm where they provided us the, um, if these managers that were running recruiters, if they met or exceeded quota, or if they were below quota, right? So this organization provided us the end result. And then what we were able to do was take that end result and look at how they collaborated as well as their activity. What's fascinating when you looked at these different manager sets, the, the, the high performing ones and the ones that were struggling to, to hit their, their uh, profit numbers, is that the the activity levels of the managers? So their proto score, which is that is derived off a lot of activity, was about uh, almost identical. However, there was a mass difference in collaboration. So you saw these these managers that were able to meet and exceed quota were collaborating at about five times as much with their people um, throughout the organization than the managers that were under quota. So it's just fascinating when you start to look at you know, leadership development, collaboration in the world that we live in, some office, some remote, hybrid, the interaction is so key with, with leadership. And it's a very hard metric to kind of manage as a leader of leaders to see that type of stuff um, to, to help um, improve from a visibility perspective. So it's just fascinating that collaboration for leaders is more of a key driver than them working hard. 100%. 
Uh, to echo what Mike said, it's the idea that people don't tend to leave organizations, they tend to leave bad managers. And the idea here is the more that we see that the managers interacting with people, we see positive outcomes with regards to attrition. And it's clear as day when we're looking at the outcomes of the organization, specifically their KPIs or even their revenue attainment, that those managers that are collaborating more, especially cross-functionally, um, that positive impact tends to also be seen within their team members as well. All right. So what we're showing here at a very high level is we decided to look at the entire year, specifically from January 1st until the end of August, to see are there any differences, any major differences that we're seeing in people's productivity throughout the year, specifically when they're in office versus in a remote format. So what we see here is a little bit of a dip of productivity, especially throughout the year. There was an uptick in February, but in general, we tended to see a little bit of a downward trend where this data set cuts off in August, but we are starting to see an upward trend in productivity in September as well. Um, so that's very interesting. I'm assuming that would align with also how business might have been for your organizations as well, where there might have been a little bit of a slump specifically in the summer, but after July, especially bouncing into August and September, there's been an uptick. Yeah, I think what's fascinating on this one, you know, when 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 I'm talking to firms is kind of a lot of what we see when we initially talk to clients and a, and a big reason they um, kind of come is the the office remote or we need to bring our people back in the office or what's the productivity levels. And, it, and like if you look, obviously the green's remote and the, the blue's in office, but if you look to the left on the trend line, those scores are almost identical. We're talking a 70 versus a 71 in the first example. So we almost see the exact same type of productivity in office versus remote. So in, in when we start to look at it and in, in you start to look at the individual, sometimes what we see in organizations is that it's more the person than it is the place. And, and what I mean by that is that if they're a, uh, an average or an above average, like he showed before in, in his examples, they usually maintain their productivity remote. Where we kind of see a fall off is if they're in that below average group and in office, they kind of ducktail even lower when they're remote. So a lot of the, the gut feel of, you know, in office versus remote, where are productivity levels? At ProtoScore, we're, especially in the staffing industry, we're not seeing much of a much of a change to kind of allow a hybrid schedule or remote work, um, that type of thing. So I thought that would um, put some context behind it. 100%, Mike. A conscientious worker is going to be conscientious whether they're at work or whether they're in office or whether they're remote. Um, it is 100% based on the individual. We do see quite a bit of variability, but one insight that I did want to bring to your attention is specific roles, we do see higher amounts of productivity when they're in office versus remote. Um, one example of those roles would be HR. So across the board, across several of our customers, for the most part, we're seeing higher levels of productivity in HR personnel when they're in office versus when they're remote. But then we can, that relationship flips when we look at roles like, let's just say, IT professionals. Pretty much across the board, we observe higher levels of productivity when they're remote versus when they're in office. So it's definitely something to keep in mind where when we're looking across the industry as a whole, there's not that big of a difference, but keep in mind individual differences do exist and your productive employees will be productive while remote as well. Oh. All right, so for this one here, we're showing general trends of three distinct modules that we collect data from. I'm um, gonna pass the mic over to Mike to offer a little bit more context on what this means for you all. Yeah, this one is interesting because, you know, given that, you know, staffing is our biggest industry um, within ProtoScore um, and we've been meeting with a lot of clients, it's it's been interesting that like, as I've been talking to them recently, that they are seeing a big pickup in their business. And what's fascinating is you see the activity, you know, correlate with that um, in the in the different trend lines. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's just fascinating that when you hear good news that the industry you know, depending on on who they're they're staffing for is is turning around. We kind of see that also in in uh, their productivity scores. 
100%. So what I want to talk about really quickly is the work habits of employees. So what we're able to see are the actions and the integrations that employees are interacting with throughout the day. So with that information, we can see when that first activity occurred, when the last activity occurred, and also when they were active throughout that time window. And one insight that we were able to pull out very quickly is specifically when we're looking at our above average and below average employees, specifically when comparing the below to the above average, we're getting about 50%, if not more time being spent in meetings, specifically for those employees that are in that above average category. So what does that mean? That means that these employees are meeting with potential prospects more, specifically if they were a recruiter or potential hires. Um, there's just more activity on specific platforms that require meeting time from those above average employees. In addition, this bottom chart, I want to bring your attention to these percentages here. Um, keep in mind that we're looking at specifically when does about 95% of the activity occur? Because we all know that sometimes we end up coming back to work after work or wake up very early to get some work done, but that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. So we look at when does about 95% of the activity occur for any given employee based on their productivity group. And one thing that jumped out very quickly was specifically, if we look at the balance of activity that happens before noon and afternoon, for the most part, when we're looking at the above and the average employee, it's about an even, even split with the above average employee possibly having a little more activity in the morning than what we see across the average employee. But when we look at our below average employees, that's where we're seeing a heavy usage of activity occurring towards the latter half of the day. So what does that mean? Specifically, what our team started thinking of is, is this an indicator of procrastination? In general, we don't see as much active time or actions in general from those that are below average, but we are seeing that the majority of their activity is happening later in the day. So one thing that we've noticed while we looked across many of our customers are the average and above average employee tend to have more structured days. Meaning if you look at Monday, Tuesday, and then jump over to say Friday, for the most part, they're working, let's just say from nine to five or eight to five. When you're looking at your below average employee, you end up with much larger amounts of time that they're working, specifically when you look at their first and last activity. But throughout that day, throughout that time, there's actually very little, if any, active time present. So what we're noticing in particular is, even though we see around the, when we're looking at the first and last recorded activity, we get around the same amount of available working hours Specifically for those that are in the below average, not only are they procrastinating, but for the most part, it looks like they're just checking in in the morning, checking out throughout the day, and then trying to rush to get their work done towards the end. One thing, um, you know, kind of Adrian, if you go to the next slide um, really quick, um, one thing that kind of jumped out um, at us on the the last, um, and we do these like data science team where like Adrian and his team analyzes the different results and, and what the company is looking for. This specific firm came to us and they benchmarked their um, recruiters. These are our A player recruiters. These are our B player recruiters. These are our C players recruiters. And they provided us that information. And what was fascinating is when you start to look at these A players, what's the recipe behind them? Um, you know, active time correlated with the proto score. Obviously, we saw higher proto scores, but what was fascinating is the active time almost was identical to the entire staffing industry. Um, in in this report, you saw about two two and a half hours of more active time in the above average than you did in the below average, right? So again, your your A players again, activity is so important uh, in, in these different roles and in this industry that it it shows in the end results, right? So the key is having that metric to be able to pull the lever on as a, as kind of a leading indicator, um, in in and it shows in the data. So anytime we we can get that A player, B player, C player, it just validates these type of studies that that Adrian does. Absolutely, Mike. Um, we're literally looking at one point five to two times the amount of act 
productivity in our above average employees compared to our below. Even if we compare our below to our average, they're looking at usually around say 60, 50 to 60% of the activity being done by those that are below average. Um, and going back to Mike talking about the ABC players, one thing that is consistent across every single sample is the employees that fall into this below average category are never the employees that we see high positive outcomes. Meaning these are the employees that we see that are struggling to meet their revenue goals. Their year to date fees are also significantly less than what we're seeing on average and above average. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that, that your below average employees are the ones that absolutely need more attention for the most part. And we recommend that you use your own contextual knowledge of who the employee is to determine, is this someone in which can be coached up or is this just one of our rock stars that don't necessarily need to use the integrations as much as the average employee does. Um, but for the most part, these people in this below average category are not going to be your A players. Yeah, I think one thing that's interesting too is it's also about like how they use they use the tools that you provide them within your firm. Um, we did a, a study a while back where again it was very similar to um, kind of ABC type format they provided us on on their their teams. And what was interesting was um, the low producers, the low uh, gross profit recruiters. That's what they kind of called them in in their firm. Um, they spent most of their active time in the ATS. Right, which obviously we want our, our our recruiters to use the ATS and so forth. But what was fascinating is they're predominantly were in the ATS all day when the the high gross profit recruiters, what they not to say they didn't use the ATS, they weren't using it as much as those 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 lower uh, profit recruiters. However, they had much more volumes of utilizing the phone system. Uh, utilizing outreach tools like LinkedIn, they were doing all of the the prospecting, kind of recruiting, all of those activities that 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 filled their pipeline. So it's it's not just about what tool they're using; it's it's how they're using those tools as well throughout the day. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. So I want to share a little hack with you all, um, specifically when it comes to selection. So. We have an integration where we're able to capture the different websites that customers visit. And specifically, we have a subset of customers that are interested to see how their employees are utilizing different forms of AI, specifically generative AI. And with that in mind, we've been able to look at the differences that exist among those that utilize these AI platforms and those that do not. And there is a clear effect of those who are using the AI engines. Specifically, what we saw is about a 15 to 21% increase in productivity in those employees when comparing them to employees within the same organization and the same role. Why I personally love this statistic is for the most part, anecdotally, when I speak to my peers about these large language models and generative AI, there's this big fear specifically along the lines of people are using it to be less productive, specifically to give less to their work and to essentially check out from work. But what we're seeing in the data is the opposite. The employees who are utilizing these platforms are actually more active. The amount of time that they're spending at work throughout the day is about 90 minutes more per day. What does that mean? It means that these employees are using these tools to do more versus to do their job quickly to then check out. This effect is so strong that our current data science department is growing and we currently ask this question during our selection process to determine is this person going to be more productive or potentially less productive than another employee that does not use these tools? And I'll tell you right now, across the board, employees who are using these tools on a regular basis have higher amounts of productivity. Anything you'd like to add to that, Mike? Yeah, no, I, I go to my use case personally, right? Like I, you know, let's say like the other day we had to do a, a board deck, right? And I had to create slides and I used 
I use Gemini to just give me like an architect of kind of what, you know, a blueprint. And it, it allows that brainstorming session that kind of I procrastinate on that I've always procrastinated on. It's, it's, I'm always like getting the thing in in the last minute because I got to really sit down. But I found it helped me in the fact that it it gets me started. And, and then obviously I'm I'm productive once I get going, but it helps me to to stop procrastinating as much. And I, I'm guessing that's kind of what we we see with with folks that have to write emails or create job descriptions and stuff like that is it gives you that baseline and then it allows you to tweak accordingly. Absolutely. In my opinion, the employees that are utilizing these systems are your most innovative, creative, and resourceful employees. Um, you absolutely want to keep them. And I recommend that when you're selecting individuals that you add some question around AI to your interview protocol. And the very last piece that we have here is we wanted to essentially just show what is the impact that we see across our customers when they implement ProtoScore. Uh, so specifically, what we noticed was around a 12% increase in the first four months um, and an 11% increase across the 12 months of use. And Anything I think, like yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think what it allows, you know, when you, when you have that is you start understanding the visibility and you can start to pull different levels to kind of improve, uh, improve those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's interesting is we strongly recommend that our customers or anyone, if there's any productivity tool that you are looking to implement, let your employees know. For the most part, your employees who are performing well would want these tools in place, specifically if they're working remotely, because it offers validation that they are working. It allows their manager that doesn't necessarily, who's unable to go next door and go into their office to see them working, get validation that yes, this person is working, this person is present. Um, and the outcome has always been positive for our organizations as a whole. Um, yeah, and I think one thing too that's kind of fascinating um, that allows you to kind of get this benchmark of like where were you to like where are you today. I think what's important is like um, since all our data is pulled in via APIs, we can go back and get the data. So we start with like ninety days worth of data. So if you're wondering like how do we know from day one are we seeing an increase or a decrease, is because we go back, fetch the data ninety days to build out the baselines, and then we can measure accordingly moving forward. All right, so I want to use the remaining time yeah, uh, for questions yeah. that we have. Nadine, do we have yeah, any? I see a couple in here. Um, so first one I'm seeing is, can you clarify where or how you're getting this data? Let you take that one, Mike. Yeah, I'll take that one. So, um, yeah, so that's the data sets that we pulled on. So uh, across these different um, staffing firms, um, what we, yeah, because you're probably wondering where are we getting active time from in, in all of these different metrics of remote and hybrid. Um, so how ProtoScore collects the data is um, via APIs. So it's not um, something that lives on their phone or on their laptop that's like super invasive. What it is, is it's, it's really the tools and the data you look at today kind of funneling in. So like um, an example of one um, we just worked with, um, they use Microsoft 365 for their office suite. So that would be all of the office suite tools, right? Teams, Teams chat, Teams calls, video, um, OneDrive for all the document management that they do, um, SharePoint uh, picks up calendar. Um, and then we synced up with their uh, Bullhorn ATS. So um, in Bullhorn, the beauty of it is, is it's not just like Adrian was in Bullhorn for 15 minutes. We actually can pull out jobs and candidates and on all of the objects. I think we've got about 12 different Bullhorn objects. And then there's weightage associated to that by the, the role that the person's in. So we get really rich data. It's not just like, um, you know, uh, you were in the system for that long. So, um, and then we would tie into some companies use Slack. Um, we tie into all the different job boards. Like we said, we can tie into uh, different uh, generative AI software. 
Um, so we take all of that data in and that's where we compute the algorithm based on the, the role that they're in. Um, and that's where we've seen, you know, more junior recruiters being benchmarked on a certain algorithm versus senior recruiters as their, their, their day to day is just so unique and different, um, that, um, that's how kind of the algorithm works. So we're just pulling from the software and in, in putting into proto score. We're not looking at anything, um, like, are they on Facebook or Instagram? Um, it's really just via APIs, we collect the data um, from the software itself. There was a question about Bullhorn, but I think you answered that. Um, and then there's this one last question here is just asking if, uh, like, do customers get these types of reports regularly? Yeah, you want to take that, Adrian, since you do a lot of the, the, the studies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the data science department, ProtoScore, we're a startup. So as we've been running these different studies, we've been providing custom reports to our customers. Uh, but in Q4 and going into Q1 of next year, we're building out regular reports for all customers. Specifically, we think the industry-wide insights that we're seeing across all of our customers in that industry can be useful to any customer, specifically even to know how you benchmark across other organizations in the industry are reports that we're working on. So those are upcoming. But if you did want a custom report, we offer that capability by just interacting with myself and the team. We can provide those to, for you. Yeah. And there's um, most of our customers live in, a, in the in the platform, right? Um, and there are ways to, to generate reports and weekly reports, but to get really into the data and those kind of reports I was talking about where you provide the end result and Adrian kind of builds you what the recipe is, where we're studying things that don't live in ProtoScore like ABC or quota or profit. Um, that's where we can we can really do um, some heavy lifting on the the data science and, and, and study there. 